Salam Ali. Alaikum Salam. Thank you for having me. Thank you very much for, for joining us on the podcast. Um, it's an honor. Let's jump right in. Um, and I think the best place to start is probably Ramadan. Um, you released a very interesting series of, uh, sh- what would you call them? Like short spoken word pieces? Yeah, it was a spoken word series. Uh, yeah, spoken word series. We'll call it that. And it was kind of like your ode to Ramadan type thing. Like your your own... I, I, okay, you know what? Why don't you describe it? <laughs> for sure, for sure. Yeah, so so the, the the inspiration that came from it was throughout Ramadan, we receive a lot of reminders and they're very direct reminders, which have a lot of value. What I wanted to bring was something different. I didn't want to directly remind people of the value of Ramadan. I'd, what I wanted to do was I wanted to capture my experience and my thoughts, almost like a diary um, through, through spoken word, just one minute long uh, videos every single, uh, every few days. And uh, just capturing how I felt during Ramadan and allowing people to take away what they want to take away from it. Mm. Um, and, and seeing the value in me just expressing myself and how much Ramadan means to me. And hopefully that translates to, to other people who listen. But I, I feel like that's the powerful thing, right? That we as, as listeners will sometimes hear thoughts of us put together so eloquently that it resonates with us like on a very deep level and i guess that's the power of of poetry and spoken word generally right um and and I, rem- I remember in one of the pieces you were kind of talking about hunger um i'm not going to try and even recall exactly <laughs> what, how it was but but it was it was very apt in terms of like i was able to reconcile that with my own mental state at the time and and yeah. and you had just kind of expressed it in, in a very beautiful way that i think a lot that's that's i guess the power in the genre generally right Definitely. It's, it's hitting on topics that uh, are, are directly felt rather than directly heard or directly believed. Mm. These are like, I, I wanted to really bring out the emotion of Ramadan rather than the, uh, the aspects of whether it be um, jurisdiction or, or, or history. I wanted to just talk about the value of it as a Muslim going through it and just my thoughts and my feelings just to give people who are Muslim and non-Muslim a chance to really feel like, oh, this is what he's thinking now. This is the process, you know. One of my poems I talk about at the first poem, actually. <coughs> Excuse me. But uh, I talk about, like, I wake up earlier than my usual to pray more than my usual, to read more than my usual, to, 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 to breathe more than my usual, things like that. So, so everything is out of ordinary, and that's one image that I wanted to portray to the people. Yeah, and, and you did a fantastic job with that. I guess for, for people thank listening, you, if, they, if they want to check it out, it's on our Instagram page. Um, I, there were Most definitely. four or five? Was it one a week? So, there were six. So it was one every four or you, five you can days. Tell, you can tell I've done my research, right? <laughs> <laughs> no well, problem. It's all good. But it's truly an honor to have it on the Muslim vibe. You know, and I reached out and uh, you guys were super welcoming. And uh, just being able to, to share this piece of work with you uh, mm-hmm. in such a holy month where you know, people are thirsty for content, uh, especially during the quarantine. Um, it, it was an honor to just have this opportunity to share my work on your platform. And then, and then from there, I think in the last, uh, I can't remember when it was, but we had an Instagram live session on the Muslim Vibe where I was chatting to various people and you were one of them and you performed some of yeah. your stand-up, uh, stand-up, sorry, uh, spoken word <laughs> content yeah. live. You don't do stand-up as well, do you, by any chance? No, I, I do motivational speaking, <laughs> but stand up is something I'm working on. Yeah, you'll get there. You'll get there. Um, but yeah, so so we had like a brief chat on there, and then and then we ended up yep. speaking on WhatsApp afterwards, and and I thought it would be interesting to kind of extend the conversation a little bit, um, and explore a little bit more about spoken word, and then I think also branching out into kind of hip hop, and yep. on the call you said something which 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 uh, got me interested in, in, in wanting to have this. And, and the line that you said was, there is hip hop in Islam. Um, yes. And, and obviously that's, that's your own opinion and, and whatever else. But I, I thought it would be interesting to kind of explore that and, and dig a little deeper into um, hip hop, Islam, the kind of crossover. Because I feel like even when you talk about spoken word and, and everything, and you look at what the Quran was, the, the fact that at the time, you know, the Quraysh were poets. And, and, and exactly. they, they prided themselves on that. And then the prophet came with this miracle of a book, which was essentially um, challenging or battling against the poets of the time. But this was God yeah. kind of in the, in the manifestation of spoken word. Um, exactly, yeah. 
with all the literary devices and 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 deliveries and and flows and and speed of verses and chapters and yeah, but then at the same time delivering a divine message, which which in itself is 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 crazy to think about. But I also it, feel it's like miraculous. It's it's never discussed or explored on this kind of literary level in terms of no. paralleling paralleling it. That that works. Yeah, that right? makes sense. Paralleling yeah, yeah. sounds weird. <laughs> yeah, yeah. In in terms of drawing a parallel with kind of modern day um, art through spoken word, hip hop, and that kind of yeah. stuff. Because something I mentioned, and we'll maybe talk about later, but like. You can almost think about when, when, when Allah says in the Quran that, you know, he, he challenges people basically to produce one chapter like one chapter of the Quran. It feels exactly. like a rap battle yeah. to me. Like, yeah, it, if we reduce the smallest, it to that, the sm- but it's, it's, yeah. it's a challenge, right? Even, I, 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 don't think, I think there was one person who studied Surah Al-Kawthar and the shortest verse in the Quran, the shortest chapter in the Quran, and it had 27 different literary devices minimum or even more, 50, 50 something. But it was, it was absolutely incredible mm-hmm. just to see the literary devices within even the shortest of chapters in the Quran. Yeah. So I think before we, before we kind of jump in on, on into the deep end, I guess, of like the, the comparison. For sure. Two, um, I think it would be interesting to, to get a little background or you, I guess your own perspective on the background of, of hip hop. Um, For sure. And, and I, I don't know how much people know about hip hop generally, but I know with a lot of different music genres, the, the backstory and the social context and, and understanding everything that kind of led up to it often will tell you a lot about the the genre um yeah, no for sure so over to you sure, I guess. And, yeah yeah for sure no for sure and 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 once again this is obviously like a perspective uh it's, it's an opinion that that i that i have throughout through my experience in life um i feel as though hip-hop um is is seen as a third almost like a third world genre if i can say for lack of a better term compared to other genres whether it be of entertainment music or 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 poetry or or whatnot because it came from the struggle it came from a place in the 1900s where people wanted to bring the community together because gang violence was such a huge issue and people wanted an outlet to find peace so there were people who brought together um people of the community all together and just shared poetry shared art shared um ways of expression in order to find peace within their communities. And that sort of branched out, uh, I guess in this day and age, it went viral. It, uh, it, it grew into, uh, into a global phenomenon that we see a lot of our youth attaching to um, because of that up and coming, um, very accepting hip hop is one of the, I think, I, in my opinion, it's one of the most accepting genres and diverse genres of um, whether it be music or entertainment or, or simply just history. Uh, in the world because it, it's meant to bring people together and that was the initial motivation behind it and that's what it continues to be um, on the proper side of things do you think that's interesting like I, I look at I mean if we're talking about contemporary music um, and yes. hip-hop artists who, who are the kind of leading hip-hop artists today well without without I mean, naming names or are we looking at... Uh... No, naming names. I, I'm just trying to oh, understand sure. the, the specific kind of genre we're talking about. For sure. So, so if, if we're looking at the, the, the very mainstream top of the line, as in like the ones making the most noise, you probably yeah. won't find the deepest content or the most valuable content. You look mm-hmm. at the, uh, the six nines who are, who are doing the... Doing his, the guy with like his purple business. hair and tattoos, right? Exactly, exactly. And he, he's, and he, he admitted himself that he's putting on an act. This is how he promotes his music, his art. Yeah. Um, and it's, 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 a, it's a fake. And a lot of people, a lot of the youth, unfortunately, don't realize that. But uh, that's another side conversation. Because this is what I was going to say, because you, you said that hip hop today brings people together. Um, but yes. I, I'm glad that you clarified that, I guess, mainstream isn't necessarily the, the, the brand of hip hop that you're talking about. Of course, no, numbers, numbers don't always tell the real facts uh, yeah. and don't always bring up the real facts. If you look at artists like Kendrick Lamar, or um, or J Cole, or even um, you know Muslim artists like Lupe Fiasco, for example, who's a, most deaf a as long well. time most deaf, most deaf. That's a really good one as well. Thank you. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> no, definitely. And and you look at these artists who 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 genuinely express themselves and express their journey through a struggle, through a tough time, through the life that they lived. Even though we don't necessarily relate to it specifically, but the fact that they've been through a hard time and came out of that. In hip hop terms, came out the gutter or came out the the rough or, or hit, they hit rock bottom and yeah. found their way up through art and through artistically expressing themselves and talking about it. 
is what's so inspiring and motivational. And there are artists out there, as much as people say that, you know, the music industry is, is, uh, is polluted and, and, and uh, there's not a lot of fish in, in, the, in the sea that's, that's still alive that are actually doing good work. That's fair if you look at it from a mainstream standpoint. However, if you dig deep and you really study the, 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 the lives of these artists and the, the, the impact that they look to make outside of making their money, uh, you will find fruitful and interesting discussions being made through their, through their lyrics. Yeah, it, it's interesting that um, when you look at the mainstream, and I'm just, I, I've just been trying to think of, of, of everything that I know um, with regards to different genres and everything else, you don't find yeah. similar content in terms of uh, people talking about their struggles in the same way as you do in hip hop. If you know what I mean? No, like it's, in, it's, it's, it's very direct. It's very much to the point yeah. because hip hop has that element of poetry in it. And poetry, uh, as we spoke about earlier, is very direct. It's very much like a, you can't, there, there are ways to interpret poetry. Yeah. However, the delivery is very in your face. Rather than if you look at someone who's speaking melodically or singing, it's more, it's more covered with a tone. It's more covered with a, a harmony that comes with it. So if, if someone were to sing something, something that's very horrific, something very negative, mm. but saying it in a way that's positive, one would, one would not be able to interpret it the way as hip hop would, where, or poetically when you're literally just saying it straight to them um, directly. And, and uh, looking at um, spoken word poetry, um, yes. in terms of or I guess slam poetry as well to an extent there's there's, sure. there's kind of very similar elements of in terms of the delivery and the the content I guess although both are, are very varied but you know th there is that kind yeah. of um, alignment in some ways um, what is the I guess what is the difference it's just the absence of a beat so the difference between spoken word and, and hip-hop yeah or is spoken so, word a, a subsect of hip-hop so spoken word is a subsect of hip hop. What, what a lot of people don't know, and that's one thing I want to clarify too, the term rap, for example, has a very, in my opinion, negative connotation within the community. But rap stands for rhythm and poetry. Did you know that, Salim? I did not know that, no. It stands for rhythm and poetry. The writing process is poetry. You look at the rhymes that keep on coming back over and over and over again. Mm. You look at the literary devices that some of the best artists use yeah. That's poetry, and there's just a rhythm to it, and that rhythm is the beat. But spoken word removes the the beat and essentially allows the the the, the speaker or the the poet to or the artist to create their own flow a cappella through their words. So I I I, I did not realize that rap was an acronym all this time. That's quite a, it, a it's, revelation. It's an acronym. Yeah, yeah. I hope to, everyone everyone watching. I hope you learn that. If you take anything away. Look at rap from a different perspective yeah. and see it as rhythm and poetry and realize that not all rappers are poets, unfortunately. Yeah. Um, but the rap genre itself is rhythm and poetry, which is an essential part of hip hop. And even looking at um, like hip hop itself. So, so there's, there's a few kind of, uh, I guess, maybe lesser mainstream artists that I'm aware of. Um, one of them in particular is, is Immortal Technique. Um, yes, a, yes. And I can't remember when, like 10, 15 years ago, maybe I was introduced to Immortal Technique. And, yeah. and I think one of the interesting things about that specific genre of music, and especially his, which is quite kind of, I would say, conspiracy theory driven and quite yeah. dark. And yeah, very uh, much a storyteller, too. Very much like he, he captivates you with his words. And it's like you're following the story. You want to know where yeah. it's going to go, where it's going to lead. But, but, but there's also like I remember like when, when I at the time was listening to that um, yeah. It, it, it started to impact the way that I was also thinking about the world and like Definitely. choosing to be more paranoid. Oh, not even choosing, sorry, but like subconsciously becoming more paranoid and like reading for, for signs of like the Illuminati here and this, there. Yeah, but, yeah. You, you get into that world, right? And, and, and I guess broadly as well, music has the power to do that, which is what makes it quite a, a positive uh, tool, I guess, at times, but also quite a Definitely. dangerous weapon. 100%. And if we can, it goes, it goes if, both ways for sure. If you can allow me to kind of make the more mainstream dig now here, uh, like yeah. if you look at the music industry and the, and the types of artists that, as you said, are kind of engineered and are put forward as the pop stars of today, the guys that you're listening to on the radio or the yeah. girls that you're listening to on the radio, the, the message is often very shallow. And, and exactly. at the same time, 
promotes all elements of kind of promiscuity and and heathenism and whatever else and and yeah. it's like lack of regard for 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 others and self-centeredness and materialism and this is kind of displayed in the in the music videos and everything else and exactly. and i think that's that's probably what's kept a lot of muslims away from even discussing music and breaking it down in 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 any way shape or form beyond like this massive block of haram Yes, you know what I mean? exactly. Well said. Well said. Yeah, yeah. Like it's very easy to to look at that because that's the most prominent and say, you know what, all of this is problematic. Let's park it to one side. Exactly. Um, but at the same time, like like you know, you, you you've mentioned examples, and there are that we were just discussing before we started recording. There are Muslim artists as well who are doing their thing, who who Definitely. have produced incredible content, and and like you know, big shout out to Native Dean as an example. Yes. Yeah, we were just talking about them exactly. And, yeah. and we were just saying that like, you know, back in the day it was like a bootlegging job. You had to like somehow yeah. download their album off LimeWire if one person had managed to upload it exactly. and then you had to convert <laughs> it. You had to get exactly. your MP3 player, you had to clear out the 10 megabytes of data that you had on it. Oh yeah, exactly. Put it on there. I remember, do you remember those little USB sticks that were also MP3 oh, yeah. players? Yeah, you didn't actually see what was playing. You'd have to wait to listen to it yeah. sometimes. There was no screen on it. Yeah, yeah. No screen. There was just like a next button. Yeah. And, and so yeah. the first few tracks on your MP3 player would literally get listened to to death. And the last track you'd exactly. never hear because it was exactly. right at the end. But, but like Native exactly. Dean is an example of, of like um, a, a group of artists who, who yeah. produce content. And, and you made, made an interesting point that like had they been around today, had they been at their peak today, um, they would be globally known I think at least in, in the Muslim world as like these trailblazing individuals. Um, but, but they've they kind of stopped. I, I don't know what they're still, do you know what they're still doing? Are they around? So th they're still doing community work. They sort of just zoned into their, their area. The I believe it was Philadelphia area. where they started. Or no what was it? I, have no I, I think I think pretty, pretty sure it was Philadelphia. Uh, they have inspired other artists to come out and, uh, and yeah. perform. Artists like Jay Dean today is inspired by uh, Native Dean's work and, and uh, some of the biggest artists who are Muslim in the world. Are inspired by their work so it's more it's more community engagement that they're doing um mm. they did they do release um like snippets of, of work that they're doing but it's usually a cappella, like uh promotional type stuff that they do but yeah so so i guess i mean it's up to you if you if you want to start name checking people or just generally talking about the the, the muslim hip-hop scene um yeah what is this I mean, so you mentioned I, someone like jay dean who i think is probably quite a familiar face to most for sure um yeah. we've had him on the podcast actually i, I need to shout out the podcast now Can't remember yeah. which episode <laughs> it was but he was talking about um the holy quran and the fact that he had he had learned arabic and then translated the entire quran for himself yeah. kind of like as a personal it's project an incredible story yeah, yeah. um and, and and that was actually mind-blowing because i think you you look at like a a, a influencer slash you know muslim celeb type figure and you wouldn't yeah. necessarily expect um, so much kind of depth and insight and like deep appreciation for the religion alongside that. And I, I, that's not my judgment of those people, but I know that's how people sometimes think. It's the, it's, it's the perception, of course. Yeah. yeah. Um, so, so who else is in the space? So, so I don't think I'm in a place to tell people who to listen to. Yeah. Of course, listen to me, of course. But outside <laughs> of that, <laughs> but, but outside of, um, out, like outside of myself i don't think i don't feel like i'm in the place to, to really tell who to listen to but i think if you if you listen to an artist and you feel as though you're not gaining anything introspectively that's positive it's not making you aware of issues it's not it's not as if it's not expanding your mind and getting you to think then it's probably an escape type of uh hip-hop you could say it's, it's an escape rather whether if someone's flaunting their jewelry flaunting their money flaunting women are flaunting their possessions then you're probably not going to like feel much after the song it's, it's going to be a three minute escape and then when it's over it's like okay back to reality yeah whereas hip-hop was built on solving problems it was built on starting conversations it was built on raising awareness so if you are feeling that the poetry that you're listening to or the hip-hop that you're listening to whether it be islamic or non-islamic is benefiting you in a way that's either motivating you, educating you, or keeping you humble and, and, and making you feel as though you're not alone in your struggle, that's the hip-hop I encourage people to listen to. Because at the end of the day, it is storytelling. There's a lot of things we learn, I've learned, through listening to hip-hop. For example, Immortal Technique. I learned a lot of, of, of people's minds and people's ideas and people's concepts. Um, you look at uh, artists like, like Jay Dean and his story and the way he expresses Islam and how, how it's like, he made he made Islamic hip hop become such a prevalent thing that we see today. 
Um, and, and at the end of the day, this is just a different perspective, a different side of things. I'm not saying everything is good and I'm not saying everything is bad. Yeah. I, I'm saying if you look deep into it, you do find um, positivity and goodness within it. I feel like there's also, um, as you said, you gave some examples and like there's, there's things like, for example, artists like Akala, who are, who are yeah. non-Muslim artists, but are, to- are talking all about, um, you know, geopolitics and history and, and yeah. social struggles and, and the, you know, the struggles of being a minority. And, and, and he's, Akala's also written a book called, of course, the name has, has left my mind now, um, Anyways, Akala has written a book, <laughs> yeah. um, but, but within the book, he's, he's literally talking about uh, his experience of growing up. And, and there's so much, there's such a wealth of kind of um, insight in there. And he talks about the discrimination that, and actually this is something that's quite relevant today. So he's, he's spoken previously about how uh, teachers subconsciously down, so, so when I think there was a study that was done where teachers were asked to yeah. grade their kids or predict grades for their kids for their class wow okay. um and and all of the ethnic minority kids i think it was specifically black kids in, in this example um yeah. their teachers gave them a lower predicted grade um than than wow. what they actually went on to achieve and often i think they, they jump by like one or two grades based on prediction that's, versus that's crazy. reality yeah. now when you look at what's happened with coronavirus in a lot of circumstances schools are choosing to go for predicted grades over yeah. actual exams that, so all, that's, that's so true yeah so, so all of a sudden now we know and this is something that i've seen a few people have picked up on but we know that subconsciously teachers are going to downgrade their students from ethnic minority backgrounds specifically black kids in london based on the on, on the study that akala was quoting um yeah. and and that's going to be hugely problematic because their future job job prospects are going to be affected <laughs> by the fact that they're teachers by, by one person one person predicted d- discriminating their, their against them yeah and, yeah. and, and, and there's a systematic problem there and, 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 it, and it throughout the whole kind of infrastructure. But again, this is the kind of stuff that he talks about in his, in his music, in his hip hop, in his, um, in his art, essentially. Yeah. And I feel like it's something where, you know, you can put all these things in academic books. And, and this is the thing for me, I think when it comes to hip hop as like a portal, um, yeah. in, like such a, a, a wider world, because you can put, information into a book you can put it into an article you can put it on a podcast but yeah. that's not going to be for everyone no one's going to want to sit here and listen to us chat for an hour but exactly. sometimes if you're listening to something in the car and there's something going on and it's in it's, three minutes like, and you, as you, you said find that inspiration the point that you made earlier was that you know if you're not gaining anything from it um then then i i think we should we should be parking that to one side um ultimately exactly. like there, there needs to be something that that you can find within that that's going to uplift you whether it's motivate you or educate you or inspire you and like you or mentioned even humble with, you you know or, or even humble you and you mentioned like with um immortal technique i remember googling the hell out of stuff when i when yeah. i used to listen to his stuff because he would make these yeah, references yeah. and i'm like what does that even mean and then you go on google and you find <laughs> out there's so much there and it's and it's a full historical event that happened or it's a full situation or a case or anything that's brought and, up, and, yeah. and something that you've kind of absolutely never known about and that's like that's yeah. for me what's what's pretty mad when it comes to i think it's, it's frustrating on, on one element when people are, are willing to just brush aside um genres and even things like spoken word like like yeah people will, will not necessarily give it the time of day and I think also, I would arguably say that sometimes, you know, you, 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 you rhyme a couplet and then suddenly you've got like spoken word artists in your bio and you've, you know what I mean? You're yeah. doing the whole thing. <laughs> exactly. There is that problem that we have as yeah. well, right? Anyone can be anything Definitely. today. But at of the course. same time, at its heart, and even like, you know, if I can, if I can shout out one other artist, so uh, the brown hijabi, Sohema, who's also been on the podcast yeah. a few times. Yeah, um, yeah. She had a spoken word piece um, Oh God, I, I'm blanking today on names quite a lot. I can't remember what it was called, um, mm. but that piece basically went viral, and yeah. and the message in it was so strong, and it was about Muslims not, or, or basically, you know, for 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 Britain not to just yeah. love us when we do good and we, you know, we we win gold medals like Mo Farah as Muslims. Yeah, yeah. But I think I heard that poem. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Um, I, I really can't remember the name. Um, but anyways, like, like like things like that have have actually had a social impact. Um, much wider than her winning that particular uh, competition, because exactly. because the message is so powerful and is delivered. Transcended in, beyond the people in the room. 
and, and, and again, now if we can kind of bring the conversation back to uh, to Islam and yeah. and Islamic history specifically, um, mm-hmm. do you view the Quran in the same way that we've just kind of described? Yeah, I believe I believe the Quran. Like it's it's obviously not a it's not a, a life manual. Rather, it's 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 a lot of storytelling. It's literary devices. It's it's poetry, trying to get a message across uh, to the people. Yeah. So, as, based off of our conversation that we're having, where hip hop is storytelling, problem solving, activism, and 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 art, it's, it, it it goes hand in hand. And with regards to, um, I guess, a- appreciating the Quran for that. Um, yeah. How is in? You're maybe not the right like, person to ask, but how 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 do we go about appreciating all of that stuff? Because I, I think for most people, and, and and I guess the 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 thing is that I think the majority of Muslims are not Arab, right? And so yeah. Arabic's not the first language. So you, you know you might be able to understand a few words here or there, or you might have taught yourself Arabic. Um, yeah. But being able to like understand the true essence of the poetry within the Quran, I think, is very difficult mm-hmm. for a lot of us to grasp. Despite Definitely. all of that, it sounds beautiful and melodic when we hear it. But mm-hmm. but I guess there's just there's so much in there that to unpack. And like, like you mentioned, the, the amount of literary devices. And and it's interesting actually when I when I say this, I'm thinking of there's a video I watched on I think it was Vox, and okay. they they took uh, they were actually breaking down the different types of hip hop beats. I don't know mm-hmm. if you've if you've seen this video, and they, there was one section where they were looking at like Biggie Smalls. For example, yeah. it, found, it seems very weird transitioning from the Quran to Biggie Smalls, but let's, <laughs> let's go with it for a second. Oh, yeah, yeah. And, and they were looking at like the different structures of the bars that he was he was compiling in his in his verse. Yeah. Um, and what was crazy is like the, the 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 length and the depth of the complexity of what he had incorporated in what sounds like a very seamless, cool kind of sounding rap about yeah. God knows what. But there's actually so much kind of piled in them from a literary perspective. Exactly. Um, and then, and then you look at the Quran, I guess, um, in, 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 I was going to say in the same and way. It's, but, it's, you know, and, it, and it's that amplified, basically. It's that amplified times a thousand. Uh, you know, for, that's even a thousand is a small number uh, compared yeah. to the amount of literary devices we find um, within it. And I, I, totally, I totally agree with that. And I think when it comes to appreciating it, I think realizing it, and a lot of times, in my opinion, growing up listening to the Quran uh, as an Arab or even as a non-Arab, Sorry, can I ask you, can trying I ask to you understand what's being said. Can, can you start again from a lot of times because it, it kind of cut out for a second? For sure. Yeah, yeah, the connection was a little off. Okay, yeah. no problem. Um, so when we look at what, what did I leave off? Sorry, you said a lot of times. So a lot of oh, a lot of times. So so for myself personally, growing Sorry, up, start, start again. Sorry, start again okay. from a lot of times and then carry on. Okay, a lot of times uh, growing up as an Arab, as a as an as a child who whose Arabic was in his first language but it was something I was taught or even as a non-Arab for non-Arabs as well I think they feel the same thing growing up when it comes to reading the Quran the struggle comes with trying to understand it and that's where our energy goes to our focus is on understanding what is being said but sometimes taking a step back and just appreciating the flow the melody the um the rhyming at every word like for example Surah Al-Rahman is one that stands out to me because it's so much repetition but every time Allah says, Bismillahirrahmanirrahim, uh, it's some, it means something different. He's high, like, some people argue he's saying something different every single time by saying the same sentence, by saying the same, the same uh, you know, few words, and, and it's being repeated so many times. So what's the message that's being put across? And that's just one example. Um, you know, uh, Surah Al-Fatiha has, has so, has, is rhyming throughout, you know? So, so, so there's just so many different literary devices that we can appreciate just by looking at it and incorporating it into our own art because a lot of us like to write whether it's motivational speaking poetry or even rap everyone loves to express themselves in a way um that that is artistic i feel like everyone has an artistic ability um and and referring to the quran i think is one of if not the best way to find that inspiration and to learn about yeah. literary devices and i mentioned earlier um and, and i don't know how how people will feel about this but this element of like the quran being like a, a rap battle at times yeah uh, yeah there's a little controversial uh, statement how, we how do you feel about that with, yeah. I, I'll, I'll put the statement to, i'll put the statement out there i'm not saying this okay, is my I'll, opinion I'll, it's, it's a statement <laughs> <laughs> and i'll clarify yeah, yeah. tell me what you think <laughs> so so what we mean when we say that the quran sort of came to people as a rap battle so you mentioned Quraysh were some of the best poets if not the best poets at their time 
and they prided themselves on that. And a lot of the kings hired poets. Yeah. A lot of poets were literally freestyling on the streets to make money. They would yeah. see a person of, of, um, of, of character or of, of high standard of uh, known to them, like a, a well-off person or a popular person. And they would recite poetry, um, almost encouraging them and uplifting them. And that rich person would give them money. You yeah. know, they would pay them for their service. And the Quran came and because the poets of Quraysh had such an ego, because you know, poets naturally as artists, they, they're succeeding, no one's better than them. The Quran came and then Prophet Muhammad, peace be upon him and his family, um, approach and he's he's quote unquote spitting these bars, he's he's reciting these this poetry and he's leaving everyone baffled. And it, especially since he didn't know how to read and write, it's like how is this guy spitting better bars than I am? Mm. And and a lot and a lot of times hip hop is seen as sport. Uh, and I feel, I feel like that, that can be applied in this case as well, where it's a competition of who can, who can recite the best rhymes, who can make the most literary, the, the most literary devices, you know, who can really uh, deliver things to people. So that's what the Quran was. The Quran was basically a challenge to the Quraysh at that time, looking strictly poetically, nothing else, uh, as can you beat this? Can you really do this? Um, can you really beat my words? And there's something quite beautiful in that for me. Um, looking at speaking to the people in their language um and, exactly. and, and obviously i don't mean arabic by that but i mean they spoke in terms of poetry poets were given or were held in high regard and so exactly. the prophet came with the miracle of poetry that they couldn't match that was unrivaled that beat. was like it's it's yeah it was just you know verse after verse of like it was the most it was the most fire that you could uh, you could get you know? it, it, <laughs> it was a very poetry. <laughs> the most weird conversation about the Quran I'm having but but no I, I think what's what's really um important to state at this point then is that if you look at kind of today uh the yeah. language as you said um and and the, the currency essentially of 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 the youth is hip hop is yep. this kind exactly. of stuff and and that's where I feel that we as a as a kind of Muslim community need to rise to the occasion and and need to learn to speak the language of of young people and if i'm if we can shout out exactly. uh, I, I know you're not keen on shouting people out but tahir adil as an example tahir adil is uh, an amazing poet yeah, yeah. so he's he's amazing. been on our he's been on our on our podcast he's actually co-hosted he's, a podcast with me once upon a time we've actually done a few pieces together if you go on my youtube the soulful poet i'm just going to plug that in i, I was giving, done, I, I, uh, I left i left the option for you to open that yeah. one but yeah no so, yeah, so, so if you look at together. someone like him he's he's written a lot of poetry about god about religion but he's also at the yeah. same time made it ambiguous enough that it can be about anything. So, exactly. so if you're talking you about love, anything. that love could be a woman, it could be uh, your house, it could be your car, but for him it's a lot. It could love. be your pet fish. And it could it be, could be your exactly. pet fish. Yeah. And, and, and he's received recognition and had his book published and he's like, uh, you know, yeah, so mashallah. No, he, things he, that, you know, feel free to shout Tahir Adil out as much as you like. He's he's, he's a good. The, he's one of my favorite brothers. I'm hoping like, I'm hoping we actually listen to this podcast if we shout him out. But yeah, so, yeah. Um, so this is like like he, but for me, he's an example of someone that's kind of created poetry and not just said, "All right, let me just perform to Muslim crowds." Like, let me let me get out there and let's let's get this message and the the beauty that's like inspired by our religion, inspired by God, um, inspired by our Prophet as well into a kind of wider reach and audience. And I think. That's what we, we don't necessarily do, I think, enough of. No, yeah. We're um, very much a secluded... We, 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 we close the doors on ourselves a lot of the time, yeah. too. And, and if we're talking, and I guess it's, again, quite particularly relevant to yourself, given the fact that you're a, a school teacher. <gasps> yes. We say yeah, yeah. that big <laughs> yeah. end. But no, yes, like, so yes, you're, you're yes. a secondary school teacher, right? Yes, yes. Here we and, call them high school teachers, secondary school teachers, yeah. Yeah, and, and, and I think that was, like, I asked you before, I was like, oh, like, are you okay with me mentioning? And you're like, yeah, it's cool. Like, my kids love my stuff. I, I, you, I think you shout out your poetry more than you teach fans. them, right? Yeah, oh, definitely. Oh, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> A little bit, yeah, yeah. I mean, whenever I drop something new, the, the next morning, it's like, oh, Mr. Yeah, Mr. Guys, watch, uh, Mr. watch Ali, this you know? before like, we do the maths. <laughs> yeah, exactly, exactly, exactly. So, so what, I, I mean... I guess first question is how how has your stuff been re I assume you, I mean you're not at a Muslim school right No 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 it's so a you, public school Yeah so the kids that you're kind of teaching are, are a mix of from of all faiths all backgrounds all ethnicities and, and and how do they how do they find your work like what do they think of it Well similarly Obviously they want better grades so they're going to tell you it's good but oh, they they know exactly <laughs> what to say they, I give them the, the blueprint to say what's right but um no similarly to Tahar Adil I began as a very direct religious uh, spoken word artist in my early days exploring the art itself 
And then I, I came to the same realization that I want to be able to preach something to a greater audience that doesn't seem secluded. Because a lot of times when we hear, if you hear Allah on a song, you're is automatically assuming Muslim. And that, to a lot of people who are listening, who want to relate, because hip hop is, in my opinion, and I think for a lot of people's opinion, the most relatable genre um, of, 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 of art uh, ever available. The most relatable, because there's always an artist that you can at least connect one thing to. But that's another topic. Um, but with that being said, uh, I wanted to, to, to cater to a larger audience who experiences similar things to I do. So the way I take it is I'm a first generation immigrant. I'm Arab and I'm also Muslim. You know, I grew up in, in a family with a lot of cultural values that weren't, sim weren't um, synonymous with the cultures that I was seeing outside. And that was a struggle in itself, too. So that's how I've sort of gone about it. And the reception has been really, really strong. Um, Alhamdulillah, it's been very, very successful. Um, and um, there's obviously ups and downs within the community of, as being an artist. Uh, I feel as though artists in the community are with some of the most taken for granted people um, in our Muslim communities, uh, whether it be like Latmiya reciters or, or reciters in, in any form of, a form of way, poet, poets in, in general, to, to actual rappers who, who inspire youth as well. Um, so, so I just think that's one thing that we struggle with. And that's obviously something I'm always, I'm always combating with. But at the end of the day, I, I want to leave a legacy and I want to leave a message and I want people to, I want to be able to show my kids and my kids' kids that, hey, you know, your dad, your granddad did something like this uh, back when he was young. And I think it's, I, I mean, there's nothing stopping you from rapping into like your 60s or, or, or doing I, spoken I word. Don't, I, I don't, yeah, I don't, I don't see myself stopping because it's an art form. It's not, yeah, yeah. one thing I want to highlight too, I was going to mention, like hip hop in itself isn't, uh, isn't a faith that we abide by. It's not a race that we're attached to. And it's not a soccer team we represent. It's, it's simply an art form of expression that has no bounds. Um, my style is very, like, I like to incorporate spoken word with rap elements and slam poetry elements along with classical music. Um, so I incorporate all these, all these art forms into one, and that's my style. That's my hip-hop, and that's my art. Um, but to say that it's, it's the same as what 6 9 puts out or it's the same as what the next big... Um, female hip-hop artist that's cardi b or, or Nicki minaj puts out it's you can't compare mm. it's it's apples and oranges but is it both hip-hop yes you can't deny that it's not but th this is why like i said earlier it's it's you can't talk about music and say music is x or music is y and, and i guess exactly in the same way you can't say hip-hop is x or hip-hop is y because hip-hop is just so varied and there's such a spectrum there as well um, exactly and, and, and I mean, like, you know, arguably, for example, on the Muslim vibe, we use hip hop beats in the background of, of our videos on Instagram, like our news story videos. They are, yeah. are hip hop beats. And, 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 and it's an intentional decision on our part because it's, as I said, it's the language of, of the youth and especially young Muslims in the West or young people in the West. This is, yeah. in, in some terms, the kind of currency um, and the language that we speak. And it resonates. Definitely. And, and, I mean, this is the thing, obviously, you know, we're not here and, and this conversation for me was never about trying to like weigh in on an, in an Islamic way of on, course, no. on, on the halal or haramness of, of music and, and whatever, because everyone has their own madhab, everyone has their own uh, and teachers, opinions and, and ideas. And opinions yep. And ideas. Yep. But I think intrinsically, you know, as you mentioned, like spoken word is a part of hip hop. Um, yes. And, and, and it's, it's what, something we find in the Quran and Islam. So it goes hand in hand with. <laughs> our culture and our you know, just to emphasize that you just, yeah. you just chucked hip hop into the Quran. I like that, <laughs> <laughs> not directly, but you know what I mean. Um, yeah, yeah. So, so the the I guess the the last thing, um, and this is probably more with like your kind of teacher hat on, um, looking yes. looking through that lens at hip hop and the genre 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 generally. Um, yeah. What I've got written down here. What what should we allow into our soul? I know it's a very deep question. Um, yeah. but, you know, we, we've spoken about like the more harmful elements. And I think, you know, music has that uh, sublime ability to just take you and elevate you or, or make you plummet. No, no. You know what I mean? Yeah. Whatever, whatever you kind of allow it to do. Um, yeah. But how, I guess, how should young people navigate um, the space of pop culture, hip hop culture generally, and and i guess ultimately not lose themselves uh, entirely definitely I, I think one way that I, I i did growing up was find an artist or a few artists like a 
whether it be three to five artists that I related to on a level where I can feel as though I'm seeing through their eyes closely. I, it's like, it's like whatever they speak about, I relate to strongly. And it may not be a hundred percent. It may be 90, it may be 80%, but find that one or two or three artists that you feel as though speak your story and, and inspire you and don't make you feel as alone going through the struggles that you do. Um, for, for me, for example, I, I like, I like J Cole because he started rapping in university and as a uni student, that's when I started. And he started, you know, making these projects and talking about, you know, whether it be his, um, his struggles with internal desires or his struggle with money and, or his struggle, struggle with getting attention for his work. That's something I really appreciate, uh, in his work. And then for me personally, the, the niche I like to fill as an artist, looking from an artist's perspective, and then I'll look at it from a teacher's perspective. As an artist, I want to fill the void of first-generation immigrant, uh, fluent in English, lived a double life growing up, tried to find his way through, and talks about the struggles, sometimes humorously and sometimes very directly and seriously, um, about the struggles of mental health and the struggles of fitting in, the struggles of friends, the struggles of bullying, and struggles of being one minority in a city or in a, in a school or in any community of a majority, you know, being that, that one, that one black P in the pod, for example. Um, <clears throat> so from a teacher's perspective, I love to bring hip hop into my classroom a lot because one, from a study perspective, study shows that it's a lot easier to memorize something if you turn it into something catchy, right? If you turn it into an acronym or something like that, it's a lot easier to remember it. Now, <clears throat> excuse me, um, when it comes to hip hop, I like to use, whether it be acronyms, beats, or, or, or hip hop, like hip hop beats, or, or even hip hop references to allow my students to feel a sense of art within everything they're doing. Everything I feel can, can use art in order to, to portray the, the, the message that's being across. So if we're talking about math, I'm going to look at how to incorporate hip hop within my math, whether it's a freestyle on the topic that we're doing, and you remember this line that I said, and it rhymes and it rings true to you, that's what people will attach to. And that's what the youth love. The youth love expression. The youth want to see positive expression and positive influence because that's what they look up to at the end of the day. I think that's a um, good place to end. <laughs> that was, no, that, that was really nice. I, like, as I said, I, th th this conversation um, is, is probably a, a very different one. Like, I, I'm just thinking back to the, the previous podcast we had uh two sheikhs in ramadan talking about various different things and then yeah. we talked about domestic abuse and we talked <clears> about <throat> mental health issues and then we've just gone off into this like random direction of hip-hop but but that's honestly yeah, yeah. why i love uh getting to host these podcasts because i i just get to as i mentioned to you just before like i get to have these little snippets into very specific niche areas that i know sometimes very little about and yeah and, and the community and knows very little about it as well you're not yeah. alone yeah, no, and, and, I, and I get to like approach it as a tourist and, 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 and have a yeah. conversation and, and open my own mind and hopefully others just to like looking at this from, a, from a, another perspective. And, and I guess, you know, in, in one sense, also try, encouraging people to give um, hip hop, which they believe to be uh, Islamically okay, a chance. And, and, and mm -hmm. if, it's, if that's just spoken word, which I don't think anyone would have an issue with, um, yeah. then, then, then there's, there's your first you know, point of contact. And Ali, the soulful poet, is, is your... MC through that whole space. <laughs> um, but no, thank you. That. Thank you very much uh, for, for kind of sharing and, and being open and, and, um, and, and teaching me about this. Because I, I, I've like, I, through, the, through the few conversations we've had even leading up to this, like yeah. it's opened my mind to a lot more. And as I said, like just framing the, the Holy Quran and, and looking at the, the literary side of things and, and the or challenge. as a piece elements. of art. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, as a piece of art, as opposed to like, this is the divine book which tells me my do's and don'ts, which it yeah. is, which it ultimately it is. is, but it's also <laughs> a, a, um, a, an incredibly articulate, um, stunning piece of poetry. Exactly. Yeah. Uh, this is the yeah. best compilation of poetry the world's ever seen. You the, know, best, uh, the best anthology that you'll never study in <laughs> <laughs> exactly exactly and, and and just to close you know once again this is this is a a perspective that i'm i'm, I'm really honored to be able to to approach people with because i feel as though commun the community is really lacking on the sense of you know hip-hop being that third world genre that um that brings you know that ghetto mentality but um in reality 
there's a lot of benefit to it. It talks about the struggle. And that's probably why if you're a parent, your son or daughter probably attaches themselves to hip hop. Um, so explore why they do so as a teacher. This is my advice. Uh, explore why they do that, who they're listening to, what they gain out of it. And there are always alternatives available. Myself included, I, I'd like to see myself as, a, as an alternative. You look at Tahar Adil as an alternative. You look at Native Dean or, or, or if you're looking at strictly Islamic uh, alternatives, there are so many available to, in this day and age that you and I probably didn't have growing up um, that are huge. So please look into, look into what hip hop is, how it can support uh, you as a youth or if you're a parent, your child or yourself. Um, and, and you will see benefit out of it as seeing art as a creative form of expression. Thank you very much. And thank you for your thank time. Thank you. Thank you for having me.